some Western media label China as an authoritarian or totalitarian state. Would you agree with either of those statements? No, uh, China has a different system and it's, it's very easy to vilify countries who don't follow your particular area. But if you live in China and you understand anything about the government it is far from dictatorial and totalitarian. The party is a massive party. Uh, they have everything that you've seen today. It's all about how uh, there's a feedback loop that's going directly into the government and you've seen what the results are. So it's a non sequitur. It's just an easy way of vilifying something you don't understand. If you label it as authoritarian, there's a lot of negative connotations and implications. And I don't think the political system here is negative. I support it. If I was Chinese, maybe I would apply to be a party member as well. It could be democracy with Chinese characteristics, but that's selling itself short. China over the last 40 years has done a remarkable job of being pragmatic. And they should, China should be more confidently proud and not trying to pigeonhole or fit what they've done into you know, existing rubrics or definitions of political systems. It sells China short. You said it sells China short, but why don't you think the Americans can accept that China now has a new form of democracy? One, racism, right? Ch the United States is rife with racism. Second, the United States, you know, is one of the most militant nations in the history of the world. So whenever it sees a threat to its supremacy, it's going to attack. Then historically, whenever you see one superpower starts to get a rival superpower, that's when tension starts. The United States, really no matter what China does, is going to try to contain it, try to destabilize it, because China's come up with a system that frankly works better for its, for its citizens over the last 40 years than in the United States, where there's been pure economic stagnation for the middle class since I was born in the late 1970s. So a view commonly held in the U.S. suggests that a state cannot be a democracy unless multiple political parties are in opposition to each other. Would you agree? No, I, d I don't agree because uh, the, the, there are many countries in the world that function perfectly fine that do not ad adopt the same system. It's a question of whether or not we are going to accept that there are different paths to prosperity or continue to insist that there's only one. Whether a country has one party or two parties or multiple parties isn't real key. The key is, are there checks and balances? So th the United States has run into a logjam that is not easily resolved unless, and this is my fear, they start, again, attacking another nation. You know, the U.S. has attacked over 37 countries since the end of World War II, military bases in over 80 countries. A war is, seems to be the only way the president can unify a country. China, on the other hand, by having one party, they have checks and balances so far, but they're able to unify you know, all 90 plus million party members, all 1.4 billion Chinese, to a goal to improve China and ensure that the majority, the needs of the majority are heard. Do you think the Western concept of democracy is being used as a weapon against China? It's not being used as a weapon. It's just seen because China is different, it is therefore a threat. It's China's success with a different system which represents a threat to those who believe there's only one system. It's an emotional, faith-based issue. Over the last 70 years, that American definition of democracy, the American liberal democracy, is the only political system that can be adopted because the America has defined everything else as evil. Every country has developed its democracy based on its culture, tradition, and reality. So what do you think would be the best way to judge a form of democracy? You know, I've given up on judging it. You know, in the Clinton administration, they talked about the responsibility to protect, the responsibility to intervene. I've decided that's impossible. Uh, in particular, my own country, the United States, needs to focus on our own problems and stop focusing on other people's problems. So what's the best way to judge a form of democracy and what's more important, the process or the result? You have to judge by results, but there has to be a process involved. China has both. The issue is understanding how the process works to get those results. But there is also this issue about uh, the future. How do you go transition 
and how does the government go forward? And in China's case, you see them adopting these educational programs. Why? Because they are thinking about 2060 and how they will achieve, for instance, carbon uh, neutrality. And you cannot do that unless you have prepare the people who are now children to be leaders in the future. You know, in my 24 years of living here, I've seen the quality of life of Chinese get better. And I choose to live in China because I think that my quality of life is getting better really because of the Communist Party. China should be proud of the political system, the ideology that it's created, because it works. It's good. It protects and preserves human rights. It makes society better.